not record this. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. All right. So, oh, sorry. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kavila Jones, and today we are in the midst of another debate. Today we have Arkansas State Representatives from uh, District 58. We have the incumbent, Mr. Jim, Ms., no, Mr. Brent Smith, and the uh, opponent, Mr. Jim Bird. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah. Okay. And so we're yeah, going to start yeah, out with. Right now. Okay. <laughs> we're going to start out with a disclaimer. Kelly K in the voice of minority, the Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council does not support, endorse, or oppose any candidate for office. This interview was provided, is provided for informational purposes only. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a coin toss to see who goes first with the opening statements. And so, and um, Mr. Brent, since you are the incumbent, heads or tails? <laughs> I'll take heads. Okay. And heads have it. Thank all right, you. So, all right, so Mr. Brent, please go ahead. Let me get my timer ready. You have two minutes for your opening statement. All right. Well, thank you, Quabilla, and thank you to KLEK for an opportunity to speak this morning. And uh, I just want to say, most people know this, but it, I want to say it again, I'm pro-life, voting very favorably to every pro-life bill that came through the House in the last three general sessions. I'm pro-Second Amendment. I'm pro-America. I'm pro-business here in Arkansas. As a matter of fact, I have uh, been recognized uh, repeatedly for my support for our business community, and I will continue to do that in the next general session and for the next two years. I uh, served nearly 20 years on the foreign mission field as a missionary, and then served two extended tours of duty in Iraq with the Army, and uh, loved every day of what I had put in front of me as a young man and now as an older senior citizen at age 61. And so uh, every morning I just enjoy getting up and meeting the challenges of the day. Given the recent tornado back in March as well as COVID, I've been able to help several of the constituents here in, in Jonesboro with their unemployment benefits and with uh, some of their other funding that was necessary to, to just sustain their way of life. And so I look forward to doing more in the future, but uh, I've always been active in the community with helping people and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, who I am and what I do. And I've got 10 seconds. I've been <laughs> married this January for 40 years and uh, Gail and I, uh, are more in love today than we've ever been before. All right, well, thank you so much for that. And Mr. Jim, um, sorry, I see that you're, sorry, stop. Okay, uh, Mr. Jim, if you hit on the bottom of your screen, he doesn't have, okay. On the bottom of your screen, Mr. Jim, can you hear me? He can't hear, uh, let's see. If I can. Okay. You have to unmute from your end, Mr. Jim. Let's see. I'm going to type in the chat. Please give us just a moment. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. I can't hear you. Okay. Um, let's see. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. 
I apologize, you all. We're having a little. I've unmuted. Um, I can't hear you. I have no audio on this end. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are you doing? I apologize. I... Okay. I apologize, you all. <sighs> oh. Oh, okay. We're having some audio issues. I apologize to everyone that's out there listening on air. I haven't done anything. Um, you still can't hear me, Mr. Jim? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, I'm unmuted. I'm... Mr. Jim, I apologize to everyone. Please stand by. Okay. It's it wouldn't be a day. <laughs> it wouldn't be a day on live radio if we didn't have some technical difficulties. So to everyone out there listening on air, I apologize. We are having some um, audio issues and Mr. Jim is going to log out and come back in so that we can hopefully get this audio um, fixed. <laughs> okay, so let's try this again. <sighs> All right, Mr. Jim, can you hear? Hello? Can you hear Mr. Jim? Hello? <laughs> okay, not not a good not a good start. You're muted on your end. <laughs> Gotta love technology. I apologize, Mr. Brent. Uh, thank you for being patient. <laughs> hey, I, I'm okay. I'm patient. Okay, Mr. Jim, can you hear? Hello? I wonder if he didn't connect with his audio. Um, it's a circle jerk. Mr. Jim. I did hear him just a moment ago. I can hear him. Do you understand? Does look if anybody in the comments section can tell us why he can't hear us? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Jim. Yeah, buzz over there to Dustin's office and see okay. if he knows anything about Zoom. If not, see if uh, Emily's on. Sir, there. I've got I've got a picture. I've got zero audio. I don't know what's going on over here. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I've got it on. already. Okay. I don't know what's happening. I know the people that are listening live on air like, what is really going on over there? Um, of course, Leganzi is unavailable. Um, he is at the doctor's office. Please, everybody, keep him in your prayers. This, oh gosh. <laughs> and we're live on air. So I know everyone listening on air is like, what's happening? But people on the live feed, Facebook, so they can hear just fine. Can you hear me, Mr. Jim? I have it now. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. Right. We, are cooking with grease. <laughs> we are cooking All with right. grease. Let me check the time. Um, we might run short on the questions for today, but we have 15 minutes left in this segment. I'm going to go ahead and give you your two minutes for your um, opening statement, and then we'll just condense the questioning for this segment and then go to the um, questioning for the next segment after the break. But I'm going to start the timer and you have two minutes for your opening statement, sir. Good morning. I appreciate you having me in this morning for this, for this debate. Uh, you just want some general information at this point, right? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I practiced law in Jonesboro here for 42 years. Uh, my family and I have lived here all that time. I uh, am a member of Blessed Sacrament here. Uh, in the course of the time that I practice law, I've also served the city in a number of elective and appointed capacities. Uh, I served uh, about five and a half years as Jonesboro city attorney and city prosecutor, in which process I served. served. I, uh, I tried several thousand cases in district court, so I'm well familiar with the criminal justice system with the operations of the police here. Um, in addition to that, I've served on the um, Chamber of Commerce Transportation Committee, the Highway Committee, if you will, and also I'm a member of Arkansas Good Roads Council, so I'm well familiar with issue one, and I'm going to vote for that. Um, I have also served the city right now. I'm serving on the Sky Cops Committee, which you may know is a CCTV camera program to try to stretch an already overstretched police force that we can't fully budget. And uh, uh, in 2010, I headed up an election which saved the police force for a temporary tax, which saved the police force from having to be cut by a third. Um, and in addition to that, I've served in several other capacities uh, and, and, and minor roles here in the city. And it's been my privilege to represent so many injured people here in the Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. So that's basically what I'm about. All righty. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so we'll go into our questioning. Since uh, Mr. Brandt went first with the opening statement, we'll go back to Mr. Jim for the first question. And the first question is about health care um, in Arkansas. We know that we are in a very difficult time right now, and many people are concerned about losing the health care coverage. Yeah. What are some proposals or bills uh, you would present or look at to help ensure Arkansans still receive the level of coverage they currently have or maybe improve on their coverage? And yeah, I'm going to start the I'm going to start the timer again for two minutes, sir. Well, the principal thing that can be done is to, uh, is to continue, to, to my mind anyway, is to do two things, is to continue to follow the emergency regulations that uh, the governor, Governor Hutchinson, and, and uh, Dr. Romero, the health department director, have laid out. And uh, none of this is brain surgery. All it asks is that you wear a mask, that you exercise a measure of social distance and discretion, uh, the, the you not assemble in crowds. And businesses and restaurants have tried to handle that. I, I spoke on this early, earlier in Facebook and I was, I was called a fascist because I wanted to make people behave in a certain way. And that's the last thing I have on my mind. But we have, we have an unprecedented emergency, at least unless you're old enough to maybe have served in World War I and remember the 1919 so-called Spanish flu, because we haven't had an epidemic of that order in this country since then. And uh, you will note if you read the news, pick up this morning's Jonesboro Sun, uh, the lawsuit filed by Brant Smith on which, uh, uh, well, Brant Smith was a, was a co-plaintiff on it, along with about eight, 17 other legislators and principally filed by Senator-elect Dan Sullivan, um, Judge Wendell Griffin, who I've tried cases before, uh, against actually when he was a defense lawyer, uh, struck it down. The rulemaking was found to be authoritative, found to be properly delegated and passed through the legislative council. Um, strangely enough, under section 12 of the Arkansas Code, there's a provision for both bodies of the legislature by concurrent joint resolution to end an emergency. Now, why they didn't do that, I don't know. All right, we're going to leave it there. Enough, they probably couldn't get enough votes. All right, thank you, Mr. Um, stop, stop. Okay, thank you for that. Mr. Smith, um, I wanted to work out something. <laughs> Same question um, in two minutes. Well, I'm concerned about our... Uh, uh, situation under COVID-19, not only in the city of Jonesboro, but statewide. And uh, 
there has been a setback with the uh, lawsuit and uh, it's moving forward toward the Supreme Court, the Arkansas Supreme Court. And uh, what we're really trying to do is bring the legislature in on the discussion with the Department of Health, Dr. Romero and the governor. We uh, are not saying that uh, we don't appreciate every effort that's being made on behalf of our Kansans, but we're saying since we are the elected representatives of the people, that the legislature needs to be involved in some of that discussion and decision making. And so with the constant re I guess issuing or extending these executive orders without calling the legislature into a special session. Uh, it just, it's like people want to know, well, what is the legislature doing? And uh, we're, our hands are tied. We cannot. And uh, so, you know, that did appear in the newspaper today, uh, you know, and, and I, it's, it's factual what's going on, but we're working toward a solution and uh, doing our best to uh, promote a return to business as usual and normal so that we don't lose any more businesses here in Jonesboro or across the state. And uh, all right, that's what Sorry, we're doing. Mr. Brandt, we'll leave it there. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to move on to another question and let me make sure we have enough time okay we have eight minutes left in this segment all right so the next question is concerning education in arkansas um there have been a lot of discussion concerning the quality of education in in arkansas and we know that right now there's a core curriculum unfortunately not every student learns the same and not every student is really getting this getting what they need out of it what are some ways that you all, if elected and reelected for you, Mr. Brandt, um, can try to reform the current curriculum so that all students are up to par with students on a global level? Just making sure that our students are getting exactly what they need and can compete on a global level. So two minutes starts now, Mr. Brandt Smith. I think there needs to be a refocusing of effort within our public school system across the state of Arkansas that really approaches the fundamentals of math, reading, arith you know, arithmetic. Well, we used to say reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I, I feel like that would be a good start. Just some typical foundational courses uh, that benefit the student in the long run and also to support our public educators, our school teachers that are struggling right now with the pandemic and how to successfully teach in their classrooms, protecting themselves, but also their students. And uh, we, the legislature has been very supportive of the Arkansas Department of Education. I think Dr. Key's done a great job. Uh, they've always come in for questioning and for testimony and to make their reports to uh, the legislature and various committees. And uh, one of the things that I've been most pleased about is when a school goes into distress because of whatever reason, uh, the Department of Education is really quick to bring in outside individuals that want to help that school rebound for the benefit of the students. And so we've heard testimony many times over the last uh, six years that indicate that we're doing a lot of things right, but we also need to pay attention to fundamentals. And uh, right now it's very difficult for parents that are homeschooling or children that are being taught remotely. And we need to just encourage our teachers to hang in there and get through this pandemic. All right, thank you for that. I'm gonna restart the timer and Mr. Jim, your time starts now. Well, 
my only teaching experience has been when I first got out of law school. I taught full time out here in the College of Business at ASU, where I graduated some years before. Um, my wife has been an educator, and she taught in the Poinsett and Craig and County school systems for probably ten years before we married. Um, and and I, I, I've learned from her that that. I guess the best way to put it is in the primary grades, experimentation is probably no place, has no appropriate place. And, and I agree with my friend Brent here on this point that the best thing to do in those years at least is to lay a foundation for future learning. And I don't think that the school system serves well unless it teaches the ability to be literate, the ability to read at, at a level which, which obtains that allows a, a young student to gradually add to, a, to an extensive vocabulary and to open, if you will, the world to them through reading. I, in, in addition to this, and this is, this is a personal peeve of mine, uh, when I was teaching at college, uh, I had to give up written exams because I couldn't read them because the handwriting was so egregious. And now in most schools, they don't even teach cursive writing anymore. They teach printing. And some of the sentence, con some of the sentence structure and context was so bad, I, I just finally threw up my hands and told Lonnie Talbert, I'm going to give true and false and multiple choice tests from now, and if you don't mind, I'm skipping essay questions. I don't know if the things have improved much in that regard, but they've got to. All right, thank you for that. All right, so let me check our time, make sure we have enough time to get in one more question here. All right, well, unfortunately we only have three minutes left in this segment. And so when we go into our next segment, we will take some questions from our Facebook live feed. Um, and so right now we, we have a few, one question. So I want to just let everyone out there know if you would like to ask a question. Um, sorry, we're not in the studio, so you cannot call in, but you can drop us a message in our Facebook live feed, uh, which is K-L-E-K -E on Facebook. And um, we will make sure to try to get those questions in as time allows for the next segment. And so for those of you listening on the air, if you want to switch over to Facebook, we'll still be live. On Facebook, we we'll, won't get into too deep of a discussion simply because we don't want you to miss out on anything. Um, so again, we don't have time to get in another question for this segment. And uh, we, I sincerely apologize for all of the technical issues that um, occurred. Of course, every time I'm by myself, when Leganzi goes, he's away for a good reason, but every time he goes off, Something always happens to me, but it's okay. It's, it's thirsty. It's another day we survived. So I thank you gentlemen for being patient and understanding um, through this process. We are in a difficult, I don't say difficult, a different time. And so we're having to rely more and more on technology to get us through. So thank you all for being so accommodating, I should say. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to our audience also for being accommodating. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go into our break. For those of you listening on air, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back after these announcements. Okay, so we are still live on Facebook. Um, uh, sorry, Mr. Jim, I don't know what was happening this morning. Something was... <laughs> it's okay. Something was in the air. I don't know. <laughs> it is perfectly okay. Brett and I did this yesterday, and we lost Brett for. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Brett got on on the Starship Enterprise and went away for ten minutes. And, and yeah, was, I'll have to tell yeah. you what I saw when we uh, have a chance. You know. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> hey, uh, Quabilla, I want to. I want to mention something to Jim that he's probably familiar with, but okay. uh, back four years ago, Jim, 
the issue of cursive writing and not being able to read, it wasn't legible. Uh -huh. Students students couldn't read our founding documents because it was all cursive. Yeah. And so former Senator and then at that time, Kim Hendren introduced a bill in the House and it passed and has become law, but it requires uh, public schools to teach cursive writing again. Well, and that did, the governor did sign that into law. Well, thank heaven for that. I did not know that. Yeah, it was uh, one of those bills that a lot of us thought, what's he doing? But then when he went to the House floor and explained why that was important, he said, we've got founding documents that are written in cursive writing. Right. And they can't read them. Yeah. Students can't read them. Yeah, well, I was going to tell you, benefits. my wife and I are antiquers. And about 20 years ago, I got in collecting fountain pens. And I write with them so you can imagine where I'm coming from. Sure. Uh, it's, honestly, when you have to when you have to change your method of testing because you can't read what your students are writing, there's a pervasive problem there. So right. that's, good. that's good news. Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, thanks to uh, Kim <laughs> Hendren, who is now retired, but uh, – Hey, he was a great guy. Hey, the, the law live after him. That's right. I know that we can't adjust the overall system to meet everybody's needs, but I would, you know, like to see a little specialization. And we have about 30 seconds before we go back on air. Um, I have a son that struggled in school. And so lecture type sessions didn't work for him. Uh, just sitting and listening and taking notes. He was more hands-on. So yeah. if I had known about the Montessori school here, even though it, I think it was only up to a certain age, I don't know. I just wish it was, there was a little more yeah. diversity in the learning environments. And if y'all hold on, we got five seconds. <laughs> All right, welcome back to community. Oops. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We are in the midst of another candidate debate for Arkansas Representative District 58. Did I get that right? <laughs> I have so much going on this morning, I apologize. And we have uh, our incumbent, Mr. Brent Smith, and his opponent, Mr. Jim Burton. And we had a few hiccups at the beginning, but we're going to keep it rolling. Uh, now we're going to take some questions from the Facebook live feed. Um, right now we have one from Mr. David McAvoy the second. He says, this question is for Mr. Smith and we'll also give Mr. Burden a chance to address the question as well. If you, if you are not against protections for COVID-19 and just want to bring the legislature in on it, what protections specifically will you support as a legislator? And let me get the timer. And so your time starts now. <laughs> well, we're talking about protections. Is that right? If I understand the question? Yes. Okay. Well, the thing is, uh, I am supporting protective measures. Uh, my wife and I were in China for nearly 12 years. And uh, we lived through the SARS epidemic or pandemic. And, uh, you know, we washed our hands frequently. We never wore masks over there, uh, but we did wash our hands. We distanced. And uh, so we've gone through that type of thing overseas. And uh, here, I think it's, it's really smart, especially for people that have uh, existing conditions, health conditions, to be really wise about gathering in groups, uh, wearing their mask when appropriate, uh, maybe doing elbow bumps as opposed to handshakes. Personally, I'm in groups all the time where I show up with my mask and then when I'm seated at my table, I'll take my mask off, but people want to shake my hand. People want to get close to me and discuss issues of concern. And so I'm just doing my job, but I think the legislature 
ought to be privy to these discussions. And there's not as much data sharing as there could be from the health department with the legislature. And so we've heard conflicting reports that we are in a state of emergency. No, we don't have an emergency. And so when you sit in on all those meetings, you quickly learn that there really is very little consensus. Okay, thank you for that. And Mr. Jim, we'll give you two minutes also to respond if you were elected, I guess, what are some protections you will support in reference to COVID-19 and your time starts now? <laughs> well, the statute I referred to a minute ago uh, also provides that, that no emergency can continue longer than 60 days unless renewed by the governor. And, and to my recollection, sometime earlier this week, the governor did do that. Uh, I mean, I think I think the governor's trying to comply with his with with his statutory authority, both under the state constitution and under under the authorizations that have been accorded him by legislative action. Now, uh, you know, Brett and I are not going to disagree about wearing masks. I wear a mask here all the time in the office if I'm seeing a client. Uh, we. Uh, Gosh, my wife and I have not been out to eat in I don't know how long. You know, went to Texas Roadhouse and picked up dinner the other night. I'd love to go in and eat, but uh, look at home. Uh, I had a mask on when the little girl brought the bag out. She had a mask on. Uh, went, to, went to Sam's the uh, day before yesterday. Virtually everybody uh, had masks on. Of course, there's a, there's a kind of a... Uh, of an, of an order, if you will, from from Sam's and Walmart to do so if you're going to come in there. And so as as public facilities and commercial uh, enterprises embrace this idea, it's it's we don't none of us like it. It's becoming more commonplace. You know, Brett and I have both run for office before and this, you know, is the is the tie that binds in American politics this handshake and it ain't there anymore and it's real strange um, that is not being the whole live gathering for people and doing interviews like or debates like we're doing right now all right thank you I'm gonna leave it there that's all okay so um, okay so mr. McAvoy came followed up he said um, Mr. Smith didn't answer the question. The question is, what protections would you specifically support as a legislator? Um, he said, you didn't say, and I like him to say specifically, what protections he would support or oppose putting in place mask mandate, restrictions on businesses, funding for more testing and tracing. So we're going to give Mr. Smith a chance to address that and then Mr. Jim you can also address that as well when it comes to uh, specific mandates uh, or legislation that you would put into place and your two minutes starts now. Well I'll be more specific this time around and I apologize for the lack of specificity but um, here's the thing I want to see Arkansas open back up. As a Republican I want us to be safe. I want us to be careful, but there is such a thing as personal responsibility. And so we're losing businesses that may never reopen because of what supposedly the cure. The CDC came out with a report recently that said 70% of the people wearing masks uh, are not helped or prevented from getting COVID-19. And so there is such a thing as the herd immunities theory that uh, we're all going to get this at some point in time, but 98 plus percent of the people will recover. And so uh, I even read a report, I think yesterday, that said if a person has O positive blood, they're less likely 
to even contract COVID-19. I'm O positive. I, uh, I'm reminded of that every day when I put my army boots on because I've written on the, the top of my boot, O positive, just in, in the event of some, some accident. But I would open up Arkansas. I would not restrict businesses to uh, less than capacity. And I think then the personal responsibility side of that is if I want to take my wife out for a meal, then that's on us if we choose to go to a specific restaurant to eat. And so I'm, I'm about us freeing up the people of Arkansas to make a decision. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brandt. And Mr. Jim, you have also two minutes to respond about what specific legislation you will support, um, whether it's mask mandates, uh, restrictions on businesses, or funding for more testing and tracing. Your two minutes starts now. All right, well, the best I can say is ever since this terrible disease made its way to America, and, and from the West Coast, it came from China, from the East Coast, it came from China by way of Europe, uh, into New York and the other great cities of the East Coast. Now, as, it's, as this, and we've had to learn in this process how to maintain some sort of sense of balance in maintaining a society and maintaining an economy and maintaining a culture burdened by this disease. And I think that, I think that the emergency that exists here in Arkansas, that is the emergency in the legal sense, is a reasonable, balanced way of going about that. Common sense suggests people ought to wear masks. And I read, read to the, when, he, when he talked to this point a minute ago, he was talking in terms of mask protecting people who, who are mask wearers. Well, that, neither he nor I are physicians, but that, physicians, epidemiologists I've listened to have indicated that's really not the foundational purpose of the mask. The foundational purpose of the mask is if I'm symptomatic and you and I are in the same room, you're not going to, you're not going to exhale. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not going to possibly inhale uh, virus from me if I am unknowingly a carrier and if, I'm a, if I am in a period of time when I'm infectious. That's the main purpose of the mask. And again, in like manner, the main purpose of, of spreading people out, whether it's in restaurants, whether it's in churches, wherever it is. I know Sunday morning, I got to, I got to bless the sacrament a little late for mass, and I stumbled around from one end of the sanctuary to the other trying to find a seat because so many of the pews were taped off okay. or roped off. And I finally found one, but it was, it was way up front where I really kind of don't like to sit, but there it was. I apologize, Mr. Jim. Time yeah. is up. <laughs> okay, so we had a follow-up from Ms. Judy. Ms. Judy Castillo, if you're still on, can you please clarify your question a little bit? But well, we do have a question from Mike Harris. He says, and I, I'm guessing this is directed to Mr. Brandt, what are three bills that you, that you were the primary sponsor of that became law that you are most proud of? And then the counter question for Mr. Jim would be, if you are elected, what are some bills that you would like to present or reform? Um, and Ms. Mr. Mike, I want to get to your question, but Mr. Brent went first the last time. So we're going to give Mr. Jim the opportunity to go first this time. If you are elected, okay. what are some bills that you would propose or possibly reform? And um, your time starts now. All right, for reform. Well, I live here in the city, as I said, over 40 years. My family lives here. I have people here I love all over town. We've got, all, you know, we've got like 103,000 people in this county now. And the vast majority of them live within the city limits of Jonesboro. One thing I'm acutely distressed about, having been a former city prosecutor, is the is the uptick in in violent crime occurring across this city? Now it may not always result in injury to a citizen or to a crime victim, but it certainly it certainly is the threshold 
for that to occur. Heck, three weeks ago out on the, out on Stadium Drive, you had two cars chasing each other, shooting at each other, and one of them ended up in a wreck behind the ASU football stadium. You have had people maimed, wounded, and killed. Uh, you have particular locations. I think Vine Street comes to mind over in Midtown Jonesboro. One night back in the summer, there were three shooting calls uh, within a two-block area. And what I would like to do is, I, I, as so many of the criminal defendants, it turns out, are not residents of Jonesboro, are not residents of Craighead County. They are coming here from other towns, from other counties to commit crimes because this is a rich, prosperous place, one, and because it has a large population for the dissemination of drugs. And that is one thing I want to try to address legislatively. Uh, <coughs> so it's, it's because we can't. If you I'm sorry. Ahead, I'm sorry. You're <laughs> we'll All leave right. it there and we'll give you a chance on the other, in the other segment, if you would like to pick it up and address it again, address that comment again. And Mr. Brandt, so the question is, what are three bills that you were the primary sponsor of that became law that you are most proud of? And your time starts now. Well, I appreciate the question because uh, I have carried and, and sponsored many bills over the last six years. Uh, but first and foremost, I sponsored a bill that became known as the Victim Notification Bill. And it was the result of one of the constituents here in Jonesboro that was attacked by uh, one of her mental health patients and uh, was knifed. And she fought the person off with the mental deficiency uh, with her uh, feet kicking and screaming all the way. And uh, that bill became law and is connected to the Vines system so that if a person with a mental deficiency is taken into custody and observed, once they are released, their victim gets a phone call to say, hey, we want you to know that so-and-so is being released and you just need to be aware of that. So that was one. The other bill that I'm really proud of was the bill I worked with uh, Senator Gary Stubblefield on, the anti-sanctuary city bill that became law the governor signed it, and uh, it prevents cities in the state of Arkansas from establishing themselves as a sanctuary for illegals. And so if we're going to be a rule of law state, we have to have something in place that will prevent illegals from migrating here and taking up residence. And then finally, the American Laws for American Courts bill, which... Uh, has been dubbed as the anti-Sharia law bill, but it deals with family law and uh, protects the rights of not only Americans, but also foreign nationals who live in our country and our state. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um, Ms. Judy, I want to make sure that I get your question asked properly. So if you could please retype or reiterate what you are trying to ask, I'll make sure to get that on. Um, since we don't have another question in our live feed, I do want to ask another question that I asked the previous candidates, and this is about economic growth and development, especially in the state of Arkansas and in this district. What are some ways that you would, or maybe some bills or proposals that you would put in place to provide incentives um, for businesses to come to this area? Um, and then what are some protections in line with that, what are some protections you would put in place for existing uh, businesses? And so, Mr. J uh, Mr. Brent, we'll start with you. Okay. Yeah. Well, to improve uh, business development in Craighead County, but also in the district, one of the things we can do is uh, take a close look at some of the regulations that are hindering businesses from coming into our our, not only our state, but the county. 
And uh, the industrial park is one of the best examples of this just uh, outside of town. But uh, I've been very supportive of business development in the state. Uh, tried to attend all the uh, ceremonies and ribbon cuttings that I could possibly get to. Uh, but I can tell you that over-regulation, increased taxes uh, do not go well with opportunists that want to come to our state. And so it defeats the Chamber of Commerce uh, dramatically so when they can't present a community as a great option for building a plant or coming in and revitalizing a vacant uh, factory. But um, one of the things that I think is critical is to, uh, to our economy here was the uh, redesignation of our infrastructure uh, 63 to I-555. As a matter of fact, a lot of these businesses that are looking at coming to Jonesboro, they wanted their business to be close to an interstate highway system. And I was privileged to carry that bill and uh, it passed. If we hadn't passed that, the state would have had to have written a check for several million dollars back to the federal government. So uh, that was an easy carry as compared to some of the other bills I've sponsored. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Uh, Burton, you have well, two that, minutes. To, that um, segues right into something I was immediately gonna talk about. And that is issue one appearing on the ballot this time because it will, it will essentially afford the Arkansas Highway Commission a steady revenue stream, a predictable revenue stream for the future, for the indefinite future. Because right now we're dependent for highway construction and highway enhancement on motor fuels taxes, which are, which are labile. That is, they, that is they, they fluctuate, they go up and down. Uh, you know, right now we've got, we've, we've, had a, we've had a drop in motor fuels taxes because people aren't traveling the way they ordinarily would be in the face of this epidemic. Yeah, so I'm gonna vote for issue one. I just thought I'd throw that one in. <laughs> in addition, you know, as far as the, as far as the American law for American courts, I've modestly, after I've been, been in, in courtrooms four or 5,000 times, uh, I've, ne I've never heard a single word uttered from the Quran. I've never even heard a word in Arabic. Uh, except when I was prosecuting Saudi students out here for drunk driving 30 years ago. Um, so I'm, I, I'm not sure that that's, a, that's not a, a distinction without a difference in that regard. But in order, to, in order to protect businesses, we have to continue to provide a foundational economy, a foundational nature of a city that people want to come and live in. And obviously we're doing something right here. Uh, we've got great amenities here. Uh, we've got great public services. Uh, we are growing at a remarkable pace. I know when, when I uh, helped litigate the annexation as city attorney, when Mayor Burnell brought 75 square miles into the city and made it the same size as Metropolitan St. Louis. Right. Uh, Mr. And, Jim, I apologize. I Mr. Jim, I apologize, we'll leave it there. All right, so in, in this segment, we have three minutes left. So I don't want to get into another question. Um, when we come back from our break, we're going to allow you all to ask each other questions. Um, and you will have, so you ask your question, the other person will have two minutes to answer, and then you have two minutes to rebut if you would like and we'll go back and forth <laughs> from there. Um, and so for those of you listening on air, um, if you have any questions, comments, please drop them in our Facebook live feed. Um, I'll be happy to try to get them in. And also to you gentlemen, after the show is over, if you could also go back to our live our Facebook page and address some of the questions or comments. It's not very me, I think most people are just listening uh, maybe taking notes, I don't know, but um, if there are some additional questions or comments, if you would please mind 
if you wouldn't mind to address them um, so that the individuals can hear directly from you. Um, again, some people are late coming in, like they'll watch the video after the show. And so they'll drop a question or comment that way. Um, let's see. We have about two minutes. So in this two minutes, uh, do you gentlemen have any other, any meet or greet um, events coming up, Mr. Brandt? I don't have anything on the calendar except for uh, Jim and I'll be meeting again tomorrow for political animals debate. And uh, that's always been an interesting time for we candidates, but uh, it'll be a different format again this year, as you know, Jim. So, uh, oh, yeah. but you know, that that's it. And then next week, I'll be in Little Rock one day for a committee meeting, uh, maybe two days, and uh, I'll be at the annex holding my signs and waving at voters and uh, encouraging them to uh, continue their support for our campaign. Okay. We have about a minute before we go to break, Mr. Jim, but you wanna say anything? Yeah, I'll be out there with Brant doing some of the latter as well. Okay. We, always have, we always have a good time doing that. Um, I, I guess uh, the only other thing I think it's, it's important for people to know, just as a matter of information, you know, we've got we've got three significant ballot issues uh, that are that are on the ballot that uh, uh, people need to read and be informed about before they vote. Uh, I've already spoken. I've already spoken in regard to issue one. We, uh, the permanent, uh, the permanent uh, highway improvement tax, which I think is crucial to a growing state and is going to allow Jonesboro to continue to blossom. I didn't grow up in Jonesboro, but mm -hmm. I've watched it in the time I've, since I've come here, I've watched it grow from a small college town of about 35,000 people to where we're almost nudging on 100 now. Uh, I know when we did the annexation, I was talking about it a minute ago, 30 years ago, I had an old gentleman come up to me who lived out in the county where we were annexing, and he, he said, son, y'all will never fill all that land up in 100 years. Well, we, I hope he's still around to see it, because we filled it up in less than 30. Uh, all right. Transportation is crucial to that. All right, so let me give our close out. For those of you listening on air, we're getting ready to take a quick break. When we come back, we will give the candidates the opportunity to ask questions of each other. I want to thank every one of you for your questions on our Facebook live feed. If you have more, keep them coming. I want to give a shout out to our very own again, Zakel. Uh, but we, we will be right back after these announcements. Okay, so we're, we're off air, but we're still live on Facebook. And Leganzi checked in. He's done with his doctor's appointment. He said, I just finished my CT scan. Thanks for the prayers. And thank you, Q, for holding down. Look, look if you had a check in at the top of the hour, <laughs> it was something special. <laughs> but we made it. We're here. So we're good. Um, so again, I hope you gentlemen have some questions ready for each other when we come back from our break. Um, we'll give you the chance to ask each other that. And then you'll have a chance to rebut, um, you know, as time allows. And so, um, okay. To election day, I hope the weather holds up. Um, I won't be out there personally, physically, but I really hope the weather holds up for everyone that is out, out there voting um, at all of the different voting, the polling sites. So will you all get a chance to go to each polling site and kind of visit? I will. Uh, I next so. week will be at the Annex, and then after that I'll be at the polling sites on uh, November 3rd. Okay. And, and since, since the legislative district doesn't comprise all of the polling places, that, that'll be an easy matter that day. There are only, only a few spots for Brent and me to have to, to try to run to and cover. Okay. Which is good. <laughs> have you all been uh, able to get quite a few volunteers to help um, with maybe door knocking or just passing out your information? Well, people, people don't much want you to come to their door. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, had a, I had, I've had a couple of, uh, I had one city council and one city clerk candidate come to the door and 
you know, they didn't have masks on. And I, I was a little uneasy. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure if, if Jim Burton showed up masked or not, they, people uh, may be a little reluctant to, you know, let yeah. you into their house, even, even, even take something you're going to hand to them. Because this, this COVID has, has people spooked. It does. Um, so just looking back at, like, I don't know the full history of the Spanish flu. Um, and I know I haven't read all the stories and things that happened at that time, but do you feel because most of us did not live through that time period, is it why we're so uneasy right now with having to wear a mask and having to follow yeah, all these I, different? I, I, I do think that, uh, you know, there were, I read a lot about the 19th century and the Civil War and there were cholera epidemics. But you can predict those, they came in the hot weather. And, and, it, and a lot of Southerners, if they could afford it, they'd go, to, go up to Newport, Rhode Island or someplace and stay for the summer and they'd come back when, when fall rolled around. <clears throat> people are, you, this is like nothing people can ever remember having happened in this society. Brent has had, had, the, had the unique experience of living in China uh, during the SARS epidemic, so he got he got exposed to, to disease prevention framework, but it, this has just never happened in this country. People are. Well, hey, and Jim, along that line, let me mention polio is still a big problem in some of the rural areas of China. I can, I can, Smallpox. I can. Uh, wow. So I, I'm, I'm not opposed to vaccinations. I think it ought to be a personal choice but you have to live with your choice if you choose not to vaccinate. Uh, but I conducted a lot of wellness clinics and vaccination clinics and uh, had medical doctors and nurses travel with me on those medical teams and uh, we did good work. But it was a shame to see children with polio when we had oh, yeah. basically eradicated it here in the United States. Okay, you all, we're about to come back. You're your hands up. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Oh, what happened? Okay. Laganzi, now I need you because it went <laughs> it went back to the station ID. Oh goodness. Just a moment. <laughs> Laganzi, where are you? <laughs> okay. It was supposed to be set to run into um the next talk bed, but we have to give, since it's at the top of the hour, we have to give the legal ID um, that's required for all radio stations. So I apologize for that, but we are coming and we have a few announcements. So, oh goodness. So I apologize to everybody on Facebook. We will be starting with the questions here so we just have to take care of the legal stuff first um, because FCC. <laughs> um, do not want to get in trouble with them. And so for this segment, um, Mr. Jim, you will go first asking the first question um, and then we'll just go back and forth. And I am going to drop, I've never played ping pong, but I'm going to do my best <laughs> to keep up, <laughs> to keep, keep up. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, 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 I brought it just up. Go ahead. No, Go we're, um, I'm, watching the, I'm watching the timeline to make sure that I catch the time just right. Um, but people on Facebook can still see and hear us. So, um, Leganzi's watching from somewhere. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I hit the time just right. When you're on live radio, you have to um, be very watchful, be mindful of everything that's going on. So, <sighs> okay. And we did, I apologize, I didn't get to ask questions about the issues. Um, if, if time allows, if you all want to address that um, issue one, two, and three, but I definitely want you to get your own personal questions in okay. first. <laughs> um, 
And this segment is going to be 25 minutes. And so two minutes apiece that'll probably give you at least a good three to four question. Three to four questions with rebuttal. Um, we have two announcements, so about one minute. So for those of you out there listening again on Facebook, we thank you for joining us, for hanging on. Uh, well, I hope that you are taking notes and, you know, so you are making a decision on who to vote for. We cannot tell you who to vote for. We just encourage you to exercise your right to vote. Um, local elections matter. I know people are following the, the national election. Um, you know, the presidency, the president, presidential election. However, local elections matter just as much because these are people who represent you in your communities. And so get to know who's running for what position. Um, know what district you fall in, know what ward you fall in so you can see who your city council person is possibly going to be. We have a mayor's race this time around. So that's going to be one to watch. That's definitely going to be one to watch for this year. All right, here we go, five seconds. Okay, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I am your host, Bela Jones, with my special guest, Mr. Brent Smith, who is the incumbent, uh, Arkansas representative for District 58, and we have his opponent, Mr. Jim Burton. So during this segment, we're going to allow them time to ask each other questions. And so, Mr. Jim, you will go first. Let me get my timer pulled back up. You will go first asking your question to Mr. Brent. And Mr. Brent, you have two minutes to respond. So go ahead, Mr. Jim. Okay. Brent, I guess I brought it up a couple of times in the course of this, and we, we battered a little bit about it. Reference, reference to issue one on the ballot, which would create a permanent uh, highway tax, if you will, which to my mind will provide for the first time in this state's history a steady revenue stream uh, for, the, for, the, for allocation by the Arkansas Highway Commission, which again, previously has been principally funded by motor fuels taxes, which, which can vary depending on the, on the condition of the economy. And, and I've already come out in favor of it. I, I'm gonna vote for it, I support it. My years on the Chamber of Commerce have taught me what what the increase in in road pavement in highway accessibility has done for Jonesboro. Jonesboro would not have the population it has. Jonesboro would not have the facilities and amenities it has without the highway network that we have now and that we can develop further on into the future. We need a north bypass something awful. Uh, I guess that's my question. How are you going to vote? Okay, and your time starts now. I, I voted to refer this out to the people of our state. And so what, it, in the committee, I voted to support this uh, uh, amendment to the Constitution. I voted uh, to refer it out from the House floor. Uh, but in my personal view, I don't want to see a permanent tax, even though I, I hear the argument that you're making and others have made. The, the problem I have is the principle involved here. The state made a commitment that this half cent sales tax would sunset in 2013. And now we're coming back and we're saying, oh, it's really not a new tax, it's an extension, but we wanna write it into the constitution so it will never go away. And I just feel like it's, it's somewhat deceptive. And after being in the legislature for six years, I can imagine the conversations that took place back when that was first passed, that uh, people would say, hey, look, let's put this on as a temporary measure We'll get some funding for highways, but uh, before it sunsets, we'll try to get this into the state's constitution. And uh, I just think it's deceptive to tell the voters of our state that this will sunset in 2023, and then all of a sudden we're coming back in 20, 
20 and were saying, no, we need this to be permanent. They should have been honest with the voters back in, uh, in the year that this was first uh, passed. And then I wouldn't have a problem with it uh, as much as I do right now. So I'm voting no. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and that's time. Let's phone back up. Okay, Mr. Brent, you have the opportunity to ask Mr. Well, Mr. Jim, would you like to rebut that, his statement? Uh, other than to say, um, you have two minutes. <laughs> other than to say, you know, each county has road maintenance responsibilities. Each city has has street and road maintenance responsibilities, and and earmarked amounts around 13 percent you know Jonesboro's going to get money from this Craighead County's going to get money from this since most of the population in Craighead County is comprised of the city of Jonesboro the voters of this city are, are going to reap the benefit of enhanced street and a highway net that up to this point has given us the growth that we enjoy now and will guarantee that into the future you know, uh, when I worked for Dale Bumpers as an aide back in 1972, it took over three hours to get to Little Rock uh, from, from up here. Now, and I have a heavy foot, I'll confess to it, I can, mm -hmm. I can get from out here, at, uh, out here at Cash to go by McCain Mall in, in about an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, big difference, big difference, and, and that difference equates to movement of traffic, delivery of goods, and public safety. So that's my argument. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Um, Grant, you would have a question for Mr. Burton. Yeah, and uh, I want to, I want to present a question to you. You know, this year. Uh, the House of Representatives had to uh, discipline one of our Republican House members, uh, Representative Mickey Gate, Gates, for a failure to pay his taxes. And it was a very difficult day for the entire legislature as we voted to expel him from the House. And uh, I'm just wondering if you had been sitting in my seat how would you have responded to uh, the expulsion of Representative Mickey Gates? I don't know enough about that case to, to address it specifically, Brad. I'm not trying to sound like this lady who's trying to get her appointment to the Supreme Court, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with, with, the, with the specific issues involved. Um, all, of us, all of us struggle to pay taxes. I have, I, I have taxes that I owe right now, principally because uh, uh, my wife and I lost a son to multiple sclerosis last year. And for five years before that, he had been in nursing homes. Uh, and uh, if you know much about Medicaid, it doesn't pay a whole lot. And we had to supplement to make sure he had a private room so he could keep the room cool because of his multiple sclerosis. And we had to supplement a great deal of other things in his medical care. Uh, and so that's one reason I've ended up behind in my taxes and I'm paying them all. But uh, I don't know if, 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 if uh, Representative Gates, if that involved a willful refusal to pay taxes or if he just got in a tight or what it was. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I, can I respond? Yes, sir. You have, yeah. you have two minutes. <laughs> okay. Well, and Jim, first of all, uh, my condolences to you and Mrs. Burton on the loss of a child. Um, that's a tough thing to have to go through. But I will tell you that uh, it's the serving in the legislature is often one of the most challenging things that I've ever had to do. Um, just listening to the heartbreaking stories, the emotional appeals, you've heard it in court, you know, you know, that an emotional story, an emotional appeal 
really makes uh, people sit up and listen whether they can agree with an outcome or not. But in the case with uh, Representative Gates, uh, he kind of put the legislature in a bind by refusing to step down and uh, forced us to cast a vote. And over my six years in the House, I've probably cast over 6,000 votes, not including the uh, votes that I've had to cast either yay or nay in committees. And so uh, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, line of, of work and effort. And uh, so I would just encourage, you know, you, given your personal situation to uh, try to clear that up as quickly as possible, because if you do win the election, uh, you may find yourself uh, being uh, disciplined by the House just because of the law that is on the books. So just a word of caution. All right, thank you well, for that. Certainly, certainly All right. We are, we are trying to do that. I have, uh, I have other friends here in public office who have had who have had tax liens before. Yeah, it's not All right, Mr. People people get into situations. Mr. Jim. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, I apologize. Uh, we, you know, I want to make sure we stay on time, stay on track with our time. Um, if we have time after, we'll allow for extra comments. But do you have another question for Mr. S Mr. Smith? Okay. Well, we. Again, we, 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 we sort of skirted around the ballot issues. I, I'll, ask, uh, I'll ask Brent uh, what his opinion is on issue two and issue three. These are a little more, these can be addressed a little more briefly, I think, than issue one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Time starts now. <laughs> All right. Uh, regarding the uh, term limits initiative, which reduces term limits from 16 years down to 12 with a sitting out period of four years and then that that uh, former incumbent could come back and serve again. Uh, I think I can support that. Uh, and a lot of my rationale for doing that is uh, I, I know Senator Alan Clark very well and he's very careful about what he presents, what he gets behind and supports. And uh, one of the comments he made recently in a committee hearing simply was, if you have a legislator that serves 12 consecutive years and then they set out for four, the data does not show that they're eager to come back to the House or to the Senate. They, they typically stay in retirement. But if you have a young 20 something year old or 30 year old something, they may want to serve 12, sit out four, and come back for additional time. When it comes to the uh, uh, signatures moving from 15 counties to 45, I think that brings in more uh, Arkansans on ballot initiatives. Uh, and it does make it a little more difficult, but when you think about casinos, when you think about medical marijuana, which many of us are opposed to, uh, outside money influence from outside the state heavily tipped the scale in favor of those initiatives in past elections. And so I'd like to see that tightened up a little bit, even though I'm in disagreement with my Tea Party friends here in Jonesboro. Okay. Mr. Jim, would you like to rebut or? Okay, well, I, I, I intend to vote against both two and three, I think that the people in their, in their collective wisdom already decided on what is probably a reasonable and balanced term limit system. You know, you either, you either don't have a term limit system at all and you rely on the ballot, or you, you have statutory term limits which are of sufficient length to enable somebody to serve a reasonable time to develop a measure of legislative expertise and then at the end of that time, eight years, either go to the other house or run for another public office if they want to stay in politics. Um, I, I see this simply as a way to 
this, this act is a way to skirt that. Now, with regard to the signatory requirements, to my mind, uh, if you can get if you can get sufficient signatures spread out over 15 counties in the state of Arkansas, that that in and of itself ought to be sufficient. I think this is I think this is an attempt, uh, really, at at, uh, at trying to to limit the will of the people by requiring much higher much higher signatory requirements. I don't think it's I don't think it's good for representative democracy if if, if things are if if there is as as is in, stated in the founding documents of this republic the right of the people to petition uh, for grievances. Then I think that then I think that uh, the limit we have now is probably reasonable and fair. Uh, I'm not a gambler. I don't care anything about casinos. Uh, I think I voted against that. I voted in favor of the medical marijuana simply because I've seen people in my law practice um, receive tremendous clinical benefits for it. I would never vote for recreational okay. marijuana. All right, thank you, Mr. Jim. Mr. Smith, you have you have another question for Mr. Jim? I, I'm sorry, Corbilla, I don't. Uh, okay. I've just enjoyed this back and forth. It's 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 better. Than just uh, this is more a debate now than we were initially, and so I appreciate that. All right. Well, we have about ten minutes left in the show, so I'm going to give you all opportunity to say something kind about each other, and then we'll go into our closing statement. So you have two minutes, two minutes each to say something kind about each other. Mr. Smith, we'll start with you. Well. <laughs> Uh, from the first time I met Jim Burton, uh, he's always been jovial, uh, happy, smile on his face, and I appreciate that. I remember during the March primary, he dropped by Earl Bell and pulled his uh, vehicle over, and we talked briefly uh, out there. And uh, so it it was it's been cordial. Uh, we have been cordial to each other. And so I appreciate that. Uh, I know we don't agree on certain bills that I've carried and uh, that kind of thing. But overall, we've been able to disagree in an agreeable way. And I think that's what politics really should be like. Uh, we don't have to be after each other, other's throats all the time. And uh, that's just not the way that I operate. And uh, I, Jim, I, I appreciate you. Got nice hair too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> All right, let me restart the timer. So, Mr. Jim, you have two minutes for something to say to Mr. Uh, Brent. Let me start by saying Brent has nice hair too, and neither one of us have had the problem of having a fly land in our hair. Is yeah. This. Yeah, Brent. Uh, Brent is a, he is in every respect what I've always considered to be, and Southerners, we always set great store about being raised this way. He's a gentleman, and he's a good family man, and he, he I can tell from his, his legislative stories that he tries hard. We simply disagree on a number of policy matters. It's like Lincoln said in his first inaugural to the to the seceding South, we are not enemies but friends. We must never be enemies. Uh, enmity in politics is the worst toxic thing you can possibly have. So I enjoy being around Brent. I enjoy sparring with him and visiting with him. And, uh, you know, we're both citizens of a city we love here. And we both want the best for it. And we both want the best for its people. So... Uh, you know, I, I I second everything Brant said, and I know he feels the same way. All right. Well, thank you for that. All right. So now we'll go into our closing remarks. And so since Mr. Brant started off with the opening, Mr. Jim, you'll start off with the closing, and two minutes starts now. 
Well, Ms. Jones, I appreciate you having us both on today, and, and, and I think your station does a real, a real benefit in promoting public dialogue in this city about critical issues. And if I say this city too much, it's because most of my work history has involved Jonesboro. And certainly our legislative district that one of us is going to represent is comprised within the city of Jonesboro. And what I want to try to do is what I've always tried to do in the offices I've held, in the appointments that I've held, uh, and in my law practice, is to craft solutions. Uh, you learn real fast uh, when you get out of law school. If, if, you, if you can't learn to do that, you better go back and try to become a law professor because uh, if, if you can't come up with answers for people, forget it. So that's, that's the, the organizing principle behind my thinking uh, are practical solutions for this city. And I think that my experiences as a prosecutor, my experience in transportation here, my experience in the annexations, um, my experience on the Chamber of Commerce uh, have all afforded me insights into what it takes to build a good dynamic city and a place to make a home. And those are the things I want to try to carry to the legislature and to okay. see this city advance. Thanks. All right. All right. Thank you for that. All right, Mr. Brandt, your time starts now. <laughs> well, thank you, Quabilla, for today. And uh, I, I want to close out by saying I'm a conservative Republican. After being overseas for over 20 years, living in difficult circumstances, uh, when I came home, I decided I needed to be involved politically in the affairs of my state. And fortunately, uh, back in uh, 2013, when I announced that I would run for District 58 uh, state representative, we prevailed. Uh, that was a hard race, a lot of effort, a lot of work, but uh, the people of this district supported me and put me in Little Rock. The second uh, time I ran, uh, had a, had a very formidable opponent at that time too. And uh, the people supported me and uh, we won that race. I got a pass on my third uh, run for the state house. And this time I'm being opposed again. I've not changed. I'm as strong a conservative today as I was back when I first ran. As a matter of fact, I probably have more solid convictions today on what I should and shouldn't be doing than ever before. So if the people of the district send me back to Little Rock, I will do my best to promote the values of Jonesboro, District 58, and our state uh, to the best of my ability. Thank you very much, Kubilla. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for that. Thank you for being our guest on today. And thank you to each and every person out there who listens, who supports Kelly Kay in any shape, form, or fashion. Again, we do not support or endorse or oppose any candidate. This interview was provided for informational purposes only. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being patient and accommodating um, to our new normal. <laughs> um, Thank you for joining us, and we hope that everyone out there gets out and vote. Early voting starts October 19th. Um, please contact your county clerk's office for location and times, and then voting day is November 3rd. Um, you can vote at any location in Cricket County, no matter where you live on voting day. Um, again, so get to know the candidates, get to know what they stand for, reach out to their Facebook, email, uh, websites, whatever form of communication they have. Again, please remind everyone, you have two minutes. Uh, tomorrow, you all will be debating again. So please let them know where, when. <laughs> Mr. Brent. <laughs> well, well it's, at, it's at the Jonesboro Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, starts at noon. I think Jim and I, we debate from noon to 12.45, and then uh, Representative Jack Ladyman and his opponent, uh, I believe it's Prunty, is that right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, um, they, yes, Reginald yeah, Prunty. Yeah. And they start after after we finish ours. All right. So again, another opportunity to hear from the candidates and um, just hear where they stand on the various issues. There may be different questions, of course, asked at that time. So uh, again, I thank you, gentlemen, for giving me your time today, giving us your time and giving the residents the opportunity to hear directly from you. I hope that you all have a great and blessed day and we will see each other, see who wins on November. Uh, good luck to both of you again. I'm not in either one of your districts, so I'm sorry. Can't vote for either one of you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Taylor. So, all right. You all have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye. All right. I'm going to turn off the live feed.